Hello, Slothrin and adult fans of Lego. It is that fascinating, wonderful time again for yet another episode of Sloth City. And today, there are a number of things going on. It really isn't for me to decide for you whether they are big things or small things. So I'm just going to kind of take you around the city and show them to you and let you decide for yourself whether you think that these are big things or small things. So how about we just go ahead and get to it? We'll start with the closest. If we come over here, we can see our brave and intrepid animal rescuer has gotten himself some new rescues. In addition to that owl that he is holding there, he has accepted a surrendered pet shark. And that pet shark was surrendered to him because the previous owner, well, it was a little shark when he got it, and he thought that he could take care of it, but like a goldfish, it grew, and it got too big for its tank, and he couldn't really afford to keep buying bigger and bigger tanks for it, and so he asked our awesome animal rescue dude if he could take his shark and find him a good home. And the animal rescuer, of course, is not very confident that he is going to be able to find another home for the shark, but he will do what he can. And so there is the rescue shark. And there is a nice assortment there of variety of dogs milling about. Uh, and, of course, various pedestrians who may or may not be pleased about the rescue shark. They should, I don't know any reason why they should be unhappy about a rescue shark. It's not like it's going to run a amok. It's not like it's a land shark. So they have no reason to object to this rescue shark. And who knows, maybe in the future, Sloth City will acquire a larger body of water, and then the shark will have some place uh, larger where it can swim. But in the meantime, it has that fine pool, which is much deeper than it looks, because of course it is. What else is going on in Sloth City? Of course, the usual pedestrians and cars like you always see, but always changing in small ways, never quite the same. People mill around, they talk, they do their thing. There's always the ever-changing traffic, both wheeled and pedestrian and footed and whatever is going on. But anyway, what else is going on? Well, you can just see here is Brett from Brett's Builds. And as you can recall from the last episode, he had decided to take the alligator out for enrichment. And what it really comes down to is he hasn't ever brought it back. He's named him Al, and he wants to keep him as a pet. And, well, the animal rescuer has no objection to that. I mean, you know, as long as he wants to keep him and entertain him and feed him, uh, the animal rescuer has no objections. So here is Brett. He is at the grocery store with Al, the pet alligator, and he is inquiring of uh, our grocery store couple whether they have anything suitable to feed this fine pet alligator. And they think that this is just the funniest thing that they've ever seen. They think that Brett's just cute as a bug's ear with his, with his 
alligator. I mean, I'm not suggesting that they're flirting with him because, of course, they have each other and they're into each other. But they just think that it's so cute that he is driving around town with his pet alligator. So they're going to go into the grocery store and they're going to see what they can drum up to feed Al. Moving on. We have more pedestrians. Wheeled traffic. As we come down here, we see we have our friend, Brother Buttchop. And he has just bumped into the crowd of cousin uh, rock monsters and their good buddy, whatever that vaguely midget Godzilla guy is. Uh, and they're just asking if he wants to come hang out and they're just going to, you know, run around town. Check out the sites, socialize, and he's down for that. And just beyond that, pedestrians, we have Jacques and his new friend. And uh, behind them, we have the rescue dragon who came, f I said he came from Canada. But in fact, he did come from Quebec, and so he can speak French with Jacques, and so he's been following Jacques around, uh, and I'm not sure where he and his uh, friend are going, but they're going somewhere together, and they are going with the rescue dragon, because the rescue dragon has decided that he really likes Jacques, because he understands him. Just beyond that... We have uh, one of our fine alien citizens. Uh, I think he's one of the Martians. And he is taking a ride on the bus, taking the tour of the city. And just beyond him, we have our friend Metalbeard, who is also taking the tour of the city and has his spyglass so he can see everything close up. And behind that, we have... M Productions and Deke and Eeyore, and they are also riding the bus touring the city. What else is going on? Well, I kind of passed it, but let's back up. We have the Fabuland Inn, and I think that this is wonderful that finally I can show you what I decided to do with the fine parts that were sent from Robin Hole Builds from uh, England. And I had originally planned to wait until I got some other parts and build this a little bit larger, but I was tired of never explaining where all of these sig figs who are visiting the city are staying. And so I decided it was important to go ahead and actually have this visibly present in the city. So this is the Fabuland Inn. And here we have the innkeeper, who is, I think his name is Albert the Albatross. Uh, but anyway, he's hanging out here on top because he's a bird and he likes to be up high where he can take off and fly if he wants to, and he likes to check out see the other things flying in the sky. But if I turn this around for you, which we can do here in Sloth City, you can see inside, uh, let's get, shed some light on the subject here. There we go. Uh, currently we have two full bedrooms. They each have three beds in them. They are twin size beds, but they can be rearranged if, you know, anybody is, you know, wanting to get close with anybody else. Uh, the beds can be moved, but that's the position they're in on each floor. Uh, on this floor, you can see we have Haley and Parker and Winterbricker, and they're there on that floor. If I shine the light in there, you might be able to see the nice, creative uh, quilts on the beds. Very cozy. 
and on the first floor and it's going to get rapidly darker so let's get closer if you look in there you can just see uh, Bob from Robin Hole Builds and also Soul Brick, our esteemed guests, and they are on the kind of living room floor of the inn, and there is a lamp there for them. There are cups, there are things that they can help themselves to, kind of a mini bar sort of a deal. Uh, there is a sofa, there's a newspaper. So, obviously, we have all of the amenities when people come to visit Sloth City. And I am so pleased that I can show that so people don't have to be concerned about where they are going to stay. They can stay in the Fabuland Inn. And I think that that is probably everything that I needed to show you. And so, after another nice, brief look at all of the awesomeness of Sloth City streets and activity, just admire it for another moment, past the wonderful... Artificial Intelligence and Robot Center, past the awesome Brick Street Customs Garage, past the awesome Gem and Mineral Shop, past all this wonderful, colorful traffic, we finally make it back to the end of the video. And thank you for joining me. I hope that you join me in the next fabulous episode of Sloth City. And until the next fabulous episode of Sloth City, I hope that you, my dear Slothrin and adult fans of Lego, have a fabulous day.